there's interpretation. Uh, if you need uh, assistance in that space, you can raise your hand. Uh, and the English channel is on one, Africans on two, Sipedi Sisutu on three, Zulu Kosa five, Chivenda Shitsonga on four. So if there's anybody who needs interpretation, uh, the device, you can raise your hand, they'll bring it over to you. Uh, you are all welcomed. Uh, my name is uh, Petros Mabunda, the acting chairperson for the day. Uh, I will allow the colleagues I have in front with me to introduce themselves, starting from my right, and then we'll go to the left. Good morning. My name is uh, Mapifo Mohalelitsie, a member of uh, the Committee on Health. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Nicola Duplessis, and I'm a member of Health in Province. We also have the administrative support. I will ask uh, on my far left uh, to introduce themselves. Okay. Uh, good morning. My name is Ekina Ningweli. I'm the senior researcher supporting the committee. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Nogwa Zingiti, and I'm supporting the committee as the coordinator. Thank you. Uh, thank you. We are having this session today as part of the oversight sector model, uh, but uh, Dr. Nelweli will present the background of these FIRs, and then we'll take it from there. Over to you. Uh, thanks. Uh, thank you, Chairperson, and good morning once again. Uh, the purpose of this uh, FIS is to assess whether the FIS is the focus intervention study and its purpose is to assess whether uh, Gauteng have the capacity to carry out, uh, Gauteng hospitals have the capacity to carry out minor infrastructure uh, in the hospitals or health facilities. Uh, according to sector oversight model, a focus intervention study is a method that guides an in-depth invest, in investigation of a particular focus area determined by the committee. Uh, the aim of the FIS is to provide the drive and strategic direction for the committee's oversight visits. The committee can further through the FIS enhances the FIS uh, by conducting public participation or stakeholder engagement like we are doing. Uh, the FIS, this one that we are conducting as the committee, it emanated from the annual report process of 2021 financial year. It is the second FIS because the first FIS, it emanates from the budget process. And this one, at the end of the financial year, when we are dealing with the annual report, uh, the researcher has to identify a topic that the committee can uh, 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 investigate. And then during this FIS, which is this one, or the second FIS emanating from the annual report, the committee assesses the implementation processes and the actual outputs against what was presented or planned by the department at the start of the financial year, and therefore assesses the actual state of service delivery. Uh, in terms of background, this committee proposes to undertake a focus intervention study to assess whether housing hospitals have the capacity to carry out minor infrastructure maintenance. This topic was proposed by the committee based on the findings of the oversight visits done by the committee 
in some hospitals since 2019-20 to 2021-22, whereby the committee observed broken windows and ablution facilities that await repairs by the Houghton Department of Infrastructure. Uh, we also noticed that it is worrying uh, that the health facility management program, which is one of the programs of the department, during the annual report process of 2020-21, they have they, they, this program has underspent uh, by 208 million, uh, which is a 4.7 percent out of an, an annual budget of 4.2 billion. In terms of uh, uh, promoting a township economy in local uh, communities. It is envisaged that if ever hospitals can be allowed to make repairs of minor projects, uh, the 29.2 set target of the department can be increased and achieved from 13.2 percent. And in terms of the problem statement, the committee has observed unresolved repairs of minor projects in the hospitals, for example, uh, George Mokari, Mami Lodi, Jubilee, during the oversight visits. And then in this case, the committee has observed broken uh, uh, toilet bowls, non-flushing toilets, broken door handles, etc. Meanwhile, the hospitals were awaiting long uh, term outstanding approval by the Houghton Department of Infrastructure. Therefore, it is against this background that the committee wanted to investigate whether Houghton hospitals have the capacity to carry out minor infrastructure maintenance. The objectives of this FIS is to determine the types of minor uh, infrastructure projects that are still awaiting approval by Houghton Department of Infrastructure, to examine how the delayed infrastructure maintenance affect uh, healthcare delivery, to explore the challenges that are faced by the hospitals in performing minor infrastructure and maintenance, to find out whether Houghton Department of Infrastructure has the capacity to deal with maintenance and repairs in the hospitals and primary health care facilities, uh, to assess whether the SMMEs are appointed by the hospitals and the Houghton Department of Infrastructure to perform the maintenance and repairs in the health uh, facilities and to determine the strategies that are in place in the hospitals to address uh, delayed infrastructure maintenance and repairs. In terms of the approach of the FIS, uh, the committee has already conducted oversight visits in hospitals situated in five regions of the province. Uh, to gather data uh, regarding whether the hospitals have the capacity to do minor uh, uh, maintenance and repairs. And in order to enhance uh, 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 this oversight visit and validate data that have already been collected through oversight visit, the committee then decided to carry out stakeholder engagement uh, with you guys, including the SMMEs, to examine whether and how the SMMEs are appointed by uh, the hospitals and the, G, uh, the Houghton Department of Infrastructure in order to perform the minor uh, maintenance in Houghton Health facilities. That is the end of it, Chairperson. Thank you so much. And my colleague uh, will present the findings of the oversight visit. Thank you. Uh, Ms. No Nogwas. Thank you, Chairperson. Good morning to everyone present. Um, I am just briefly going to give a synopsis of um, the FIS oversight visits that were undertaken by the Portfolio Committee, and it was on four facilities, Dr. Yusuf Dadu, which is in the West Rand, Sibugeng Hospital, which is in Citibank, Tere Mokorane, which is in Eguruleni, as well as Rahima Musa in the city of uh, Johannesburg. So the presentation will offer an overview uh, basically of the key findings from all four hospitals that seek to directly respond to the FIS subject. 
With regards to Dr. Yusuf at um, Dadu Hospital, so the committee found that 700,000 had been granted to the facility for the fiscal year 21-22. Twenty one twenty two financial year. Um, and it was noted that the budget that had been um, reserved was observed to be dropping year after year. Uh, contractor payments were delayed, uh, resulting to accruals. The facility had uh, never been renovated since its opening, therefore, the infrastructure is old and deteriorated. The nursing home is also de deteriorated, and it is unsafe for students to reside there. Uh, due to the age of the hospitals, repairs are necessary on a daily basis. Uh, the pipeline of oxygen apparatus was also requiring immediate, immediate attention since they were using bandages to keep it intact. And in most cases, vendors or contractors supply substandard equipment. Uh, the turnaround time for maintenance is very poor because supply chain processes within DID take time uh, for approvals and the stores had been taken away from the facility and this was making it impossible to speed up turnaround times for minor maintenance issues. Uh, they also had stated that they require a new mother and child unit. With regards to Sebogeng Hospital, the uh, hospital is included in the department's uh, OHS program for priority hospital redevelopment. Uh, the construction of a mental ward and the expansion of the accident and emergency were identified as the most press pressing infrastructure needs. A major uh, difficulty identified was the lack of communication between the facilities uh, management team and the contractors. It was discovered that the contractors, they refused to be held accountable by the institution since they are stating that they are appointed by DID, so um, they are not meant to uh, account to the facility. It was noted that some contractors assigned to, 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 for, to conduct work in the hospital, they go as far as Pretoria and Sibuang is in uh, Citibank. And in some cases, they are not focused on one institution, but they are also appointed for uh, about three or more facilities within the area. As a result, the service becomes erratic and of poor quality. Furthermore, this shows a lack of local economic empowerment since they are coming from a different uh, region. It was discovered that it can take up to two weeks to complete a basic work such as replacing a light bulb and up to two years to repair shattered windows. On site, there were 33 DID appointed personnel and it was mentioned that they not only maintain the hospital but also they manage the, and maintain the hospital, the clinics in the surrounding area. With regards to Tele Mokorani Hospital, they stated 27 uh, million was set aside for repairs and maintenance for the fiscal year 21-22, and it was discovered also that their sum of um, the amount allocated is decreasing year after year. The hospital suffers from water leaks each time it rains. Uh, there is theft and vandalism causing malicious harm uh, to toilet facilities. Uh, but there is a plan to acquire plastic taps and toilet seats covering for the fiscal year 22-23. There is a need for signage, uh, and this was identified to be implemented in 22-23 financial year. There are visual uh, structural cracks that cause anxiety among staff. The predicted effect is that the possibility of walls co collapsing on, on workers and patients is possible. There is inadequate storage that was reported, but they had identified an area for that uh, within the hospital. There is storm water drainage, which is a problem, and there is um, a complete collapse of drainage. During rainy days, the hospital becomes clogged and causes floods. There were 50 Gauteng uh, Department of Infrastructure personnel on site, and um, the biggest issue was the lack of essential materials on site for them to conduct work. Uh, DID is also in charge of appointing contractors and they also take time and they delay in the maintenance of, of, of projects. With regards to Rahima Musa, there was a, a, a lot that was discovered at Rahima Musa, but just to sum up, um, they were allocated 2.2 million as of January 22, but their expenditure was already at 118% spent by the time the committee had visited. Uh, they had also not received an increase in the budget, and they also had accruals. Um, the hospital has resorted to buying materials meant to be procured by DID since their method uh, to just procure themselves uh, was proving to be faster and cheaper. So uh, DID focuses on statutory repairs such as boilers and lifts. There were 32 DID personnel on site 
and due to the age of the infrastructure, they also had similar problems whereby the sewerage system was requiring attention, the oxygen uh, points were requiring attention, the toilet ablution uh, were not working and so forth. And then in terms of the overall assessment, uh, whilst noting the presentation and debates with the department as well as the hospital visited by the committee, it is concerning that all facilities are dissatisfied with the services provided by the uh, Houting Department of Infrastructure in terms of minor infrastructure repairs. All facilities are expressing the lengthy turnaround times associated with basic repairs, such as uh, replacing a globe or ablution facilities, implying that they may be forced to operate without ablution facilities for an extended period of time. And this then, because there are also potholes and so forth in the hospitals, it has repercussions for patient safety. Another source of concern was the lack of communication between the facility, as stated, and the ID. Um, the, the divide between the two departments is showing a solo ma mindset, and this necessitates attention and rectification, since both departments should be working together to monitor contractors on site in order to provide a better service. The committee is also concerned that the facility's maintenance budget for all facilities is shrinking year after year. Um, all of the facilities visited, with the exception of Tele Mohorane, were erected a number of years ago and are dilapidated. So it's only reasonable, reasonable that the department should ensure that these facilities are effectively maintained while, whilst preparing to repair or construct a new facility. The committee is not receptive, receptive to the argument that money has, be, has been spent to obtain e-maintenance and that has shown to evidently not be effective. In terms of the way forward, the, section, the session today is to explore a proposed way forward and deliberate on proposed solutions. The session to take the, the session to answer the key question of the FIS topic, which is do Gauteng public hospitals have the capacity to carry out minor infrastructure maintenance projects? It's also vital to address policy consideration as well as staff or capacity within hospital facilities when stakeholders are proposing solutions or responses to the above. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, uh, Nokwazi, for the presentation but also for, for the earlier presentation uh, by Dr. Nolweli. Uh, there it is. We will now get, have to get the responses of the, of the facilities uh, in terms of what is their thinking. Do we have that capacity? Uh, or what are the challenges and what could be the solutions to, to, to the challenges. Uh, it has been an ongoing concern across the province, uh, as mentioned in the presentation, with regards to uh, DID incapacity in, in to uh, ensure that facilities uh, or infrastructure across the province in our health facilities are maintained uh, the, the issue of the turnaround time to respond to minor uh, infrastructure challenges, replacing a tap, a block toilet, or small things that needs to be done in our health facilities. That are uh, an issue for our or for, for that, is a, that are threats to patients' uh, care. Uh, I will then now allow uh, facility managers or those that are representing them to uh, give us their sight, uh, and then we'll have a discussion thereafter. Can we take hands? I see mm -hmm. this one, two, uh, three, four, five, Six, six ends, seven. Okay, can we, have you got one? Can we raise the hands again so that I give you numbers? Yeah. Can we raise hands? We can start from here. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, six this side. Uh, seven, eight. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Number one. 
Thank you, Chairperson. Good evening to everybody. My name is Kavelo Mudisani. I am from the West End, Stark Fountain Hospital. I'm the facility manager. Uh, I've, I've been seeing the presentation from all institutions. And normally, us as FMU managers, we normally talk about the frustrations regarding the operations in the institution. I think we are experiencing the same problem in all institutions. In terms of the capacity to, to, to execute minor projects, I think uh, in the past we used to, 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 to have our small project under 10%, as we are a person that the DID is allocated 90% of the, of the budget and 10% goes to, to institutions. So uh, in, in the past financial years, the 10% budget was sufficient to such an extent that we could be able to procure material for DID, internal maintenance team, as well as running those smaller projects, small works projects, the repairs of uh, uh, broken glass windows, and uh, repairing, replacing the doors and so forth. So based on the fact that in the past two financial years, the budget that has been allocated to the institution has been insufficient to such an extent that we are not even in the position to execute those small works projects. So my proposal to, to, the, to this committee is that even if the issue of procuring material, a, an institution won't be, can be compared to, to, to an, office, uh, an office building. If, if, you, if the steam trap has blocked, for an example, or it has to be replaced. It has to be replaced now because it affects all the lines going to another wards. So I'm proposing that perhaps we also need to have what we call the fixed term contract. We have a contract for a period of three years or two years with a service provider who will be able to, 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 to who, whom as facility managers will be able to call and say, I'm in need of a steam trap on Sunday. If I need a steam trap on Sunday, it means I have to wait for Monday. So, so once we have uh, those kind of uh, uh, procurement methodology, whereby we contract an, an SME from the nearby uh, 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 township or whatever the case may be, then we know that even if it's on Sunday, I, I need a critical item such as a stream trap or, or a tap, I can just be able to call that person who's been contracted to the institution or maybe contracted to the Western, for example, saving all those institutions, then it will be easier for us to get those materials because issue of material has been an issue since I joined the department. So I think perhaps we, we, we need to explore a situation whereby we have fixed term contract for mechanical, we have fixed term contract to supply the plumbing material as well as the building, uh, the building material. It will be easy for us to, to source those kind of material. And in terms of uh, capacity to execute those small works projects, I, I, to my understanding, based on the conversation that I had with other facility managers, we normally run those small works projects, replacing of uh, glass windows, as I've mentioned. So I, I'll, 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 I'll agree with the proposal from the committee that we, we, we really need to, to ensure that we execute those projects. And the key is the budget. Once there's enough funds allocated to the institution under 10%, perhaps maybe the 10% can be increased to 20% and we know 80% will be of those major projects such as maintenance of your, your structural project, your boiler, your fire equipment and so forth. I think I'll pause there. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, thank you. I'm Petula Malatela. I'm from Dr. George Mukari Academic Hospital. Some of the issues have been uh, covered by the, uh, the former speaker, but the bottom line is the hospitals of the Department of Health in Gauteng does not have uh, sufficient staff to do this um, maintenance. Reason being, when the decision to use DID as, a, 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 as an implementing agent of all uh, maintenance issues. Hospitals did not have a chance or, or to, to create trade-related positions because they are, they are covered by the 
DID. And now, the problem, I'm, I'm, I, I, I saw with that we will be having our colleagues from DID in here so that they can hear it very well. The DID where I'm working, they become part of the hospital when it suits them. And if they have to assist you, they become DID on your, on, on your side. And uh, so the, 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 the main thing here is the issue of unavailability of professional trade posts because they are allocated to DID. For example, if I can give you an example, a hospital as big as Dr. George Mukaru, we are having close to 106 resident DID employees. But you look into the maintenance itself, you do, you'll think that we only have four people. And the other thing that was covered here is the turnaround time, more especially with uh, maintenance done by outsourced maintenance, where um, the appointment of service providers takes long. We, don't, we end up uh, even forgetting that uh, there, 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 there was a need to, to, to have a project done. And the one other thing that I, we have picked from DID is maybe the issue of, this, uh, uh, of defining agency and emergency. In a hospital setup, emergency is if it's not, when, it's, if it's not done, we will have bad replications. We might as well lose lives. But uh, from the perspective of DID, they seem to be mixing the two, agency and a emergency. Where you find that an emergency is treated like an agency. I mean, if there is a burst pipe in a maternity ward, which is uh, always uh, having a patients who are giving birth and so on, and we don't have water in there, then we end up having to appoint a contractor after two days. That's not agency. That will never be an emergency. Emergency must be treated as such. And uh, the other things that we had here, I think were, were, were what my colleagues have given me again, okay, it's almost what I said to say, we had increased the, de uh, the demand for services, and uh, the other thing is insufficient budget. The problem that we have is that, uh, which might as well be a solution to say, let the budget be informed by the needs of the institution as end user rather than being told that you only need so much besides uh, 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 without looking into the actual needs of an institution and uh, one of the, the other one is the issue the, 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 the issue of uh, the solutions and another solution is capacitate the the, the, the staff establishment so that we can have prof uh, professionals within health i will pause here Uh, thank you, number three. Uh, but just to, to remind you again as you uh, speak uh, that the questions remain that do we have capacity in our health facilities to uh, take over the function of the repairs and maintenance of our infrastructure in hospitals or in our health facilities? Uh, if yes or if no, what could be the solutions that we are proposing? Number three. Uh, good morning, Chairperson. I am Ms. Malebo uh, from the Oral and Dental Hospital in Pretoria. Uh, Chairperson, maybe I should start by indicating that um, there has been challenges with the quality of work that DAD and the contractors that they, are, uh, that they have contracts with uh, have been realized. In the past, institutions would have identified whatever projects that would be long-term, nor agency, like my colleagues have alluded. But it is unfortunate that at this point, yes, the question is, do we have the capacity as the hospital? Of course, the answer would be no, we do not have the manpower to do that. But in terms of expertise, 
and uh, um, possibility of appointing young uh, artisans from FET colleges, no technicons, there seemed to be a possibility, of course, coming to something like three years to come as a long-term or short-term strategy. So yes, in future, yes, there is a possibility that we can have uh, members appointed to, to come and, and serve us as, as institutions based on the fact that by then, as institutions, we would have identified the number of people that we would want to be expanded on our staff establishments, which is now possibly a, 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 a threat to us to say that we are currently uh, ready to actually serve as infrastructure. So yes, as institutions, year in, year out, on our MTEF, we would identify the challenges and proposed expansions of staff establishment. Unfortunately, up to this far, that has gone to f in vain. So, Chairperson, in terms of the turnaround time of service delivery by DID, I should mention that from my hospital, um, it has been the worst experience ever. Because an expected date of completion of a project would have been last year, the 28th of February, but even today, you see that nothing is, is, is happening. And it's unfortunate, as my colleague has alluded, Contractors do not show up at all. They show up when we do not know, and the worst part is that they, hand, they want to do the handing over of the work that is actually inferior in terms of quality. It not only affects the service delivery, but also the occupational health and safety uh, with, of our employees. So it, it is not actually right, even smaller uh, uh, um, projects like replacement of a tap, it becomes a challenge, replacement of a window. It becomes a challenge. So given the fact that if maybe this portfolio committee would actually support us as institutions or the Department of Health to have Pardon me, Chairperson. To have um, members appointed, even on, on lower categories like maybe salary level fives, which is not that expensive compared to what we are paying, what we are paying uh, currently on, on contract maintenance. I believe it would make our life easier. And I would like to pause, Chairperson, thank you. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Jenny from Edinburgh Hospital. Um, we are all experiencing the same problems with the DID um, personnel on our sites. Um, 30, 40 people on a site, um, they just don't work. No matter, I've got all the material in the world, and then they will come to me and say, I don't have the tools. They will always find an excuse not to do the work. We can go to Edenville now. They sit in the workshops at the heaters, and then I want to work overtime from Saturday, Sunday, and they get paid for it. Um, they very much, uh, that is the attitude of the DRD people. Um, do we have the capacity at the moment? No, but at the moment, me as a facility manager, I do specifications, I do small projects. Edenville Hospital is the only hospital that got 20% of um, the current budget for this financial year because of the small projects that I've done in the past um, at Edenville Hospital. As one person, I think I've done more than the whole DID group. Um, I've been sitting with a boiler that's been shut down since last year, July. And last week they came and they shut down my second boiler. So we're sitting with no steam, no hot water. Uh, the first boiler was supposed to be shut down for 16 weeks. We had seven months. So that is what DID does for, for our institutions. Um, currently there's two contracts in place for material, uh, electrical and plumbing. Um, and according to DID, that these contracts ended now, and there's no place for us to order material at the moment. I'm ordering through my stores, and um, we buy through our goods and services budget. 
whatever we need. I sometimes go and I buy material out of my own pocket. So if we can maybe increase um, and um, go ahead with the petty cash problems, um, I mean, petty cash was taken away from the hospitals and 2,000 rand, it's nothing. Um, the other day I bought two copper pipes to fix the battery of the um, calorifier and it cost me 4,000 rand. So um, I think if we can take over some of this personnel that really wants to work um, over onto our staff establishment where we can um, do the contracting and job descriptions with them, it can work. That's, um, I think that's the way forward. No, um, thanks, uh, Chairperson, for <clears throat> the opportunity. <clears throat> You're speaking to uh, Mr. Makubela Tami. I'm the facility manager here in uh, Begim Langin District Hospital. You know, Chair, I don't want to touch on what uh, my colleagues have already touched, but maybe if it happened that I've touched, it will be the issue of making an, an, or to emphasize on that matters. To start with, Chairperson, to maybe to respond to your question, Gauteng Public Hospital have no capacity to carry out a minor infrastructure maintenance project. We don't have. I think if, even if you can look uh, from your presentation, for the few hospitals that you mentioned here, maintenance, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a disaster. I mean, even if we can go now and do our assessment again, you will find the ablutions that are not working. You know, you will find the same cracks. Things that you have observed previously, the status quo remains. Some of them are even becoming even worse. And uh, the only thing that contributes to that, Chairperson, one is the issue of staffing from our implementing uh, 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 agent, DID. DID, they don't have all this discipline. You know, in maintenance, you need to have the plumbing team, the carpentry, electricians and staff. You go to the institution, you won't for you will find two of plumbing, one of electrician, there is no carpentry, there is none. Even the chief artisan, you find that there is only one chief artisan who is supposed to manage all of these disciplines. Remember, Chairperson, every time when we're raising these issues to our implementing agency, they will always tell us that um, they are team members. They cannot go and undertake any activities without having the chief artisan as their team leader or to, 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 to manage them. Hence now, even if they can be many, but if we are having one chief artisan, it's going to be a problem. Number two, the issue, my little friend mentioned the issue of materials. We're always being told that there is a budget for, man, uh, for, for, for maintenance, but you hardly see those uh, materials in the workshops. There is none. You will be told that we are still awaiting for delivery. We are still awaiting for delivery. And then, um, now I just want to come straight now to the system or to the approach that the department or is an arrangement that the department made in terms of um, managing the maintenance in, the, in, in, in our facilities. They've put DID to say DID will be our implementing agent. But they don't actually, they don't give us anything to be honest. Now, when you look into the structure in the institution, Chairperson, uh, in maintenance, you go to the institution, you will be having the FMU manager, and then the FMU manager will be working alone, maybe sometimes with only one clerk. There is no internal handyman, there is no internal plumbing, there is no, all of this discipline they will be falling to DID. So, in other ways, Chair, it simply means the FMU manager in the institution 
has no jurisdiction or any capacity to manage those uh, 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 plumbing teams, uh, carpentry and stuff. There is only one person who actually they are listening to is their chief artisan. We don't know their job description. We don't know their working condition, what time they are coming for, uh, to work, what time uh, actually they are knocking off. So it's a problem. If we need to address issues, we need to go via the chief artisan. If the chief artisan is not there, it's a problem. So, and then this thing is, is, is go to the extent even of appointing the contractors. If there are some minor uh, maintenance that they, they are beyond the scope of the um, discipline that are within the institution, that the, the plan being, maybe there is a pipe plus that needs the contractor to come and break the whole wall or use a specific uh, machines to address that or resolve that defects. It means now they need, they, there will be a need for them to appoint a contractor. But here lies the problem. Even when they appoint that, that contractor, there is no way as facility managers, features there, will be drafting only the service request. And then the DID project manager, which is the, is the inspectorate, they will drive the specification after we confirm, they take the specification to their own supply chain in DID. And that's where things will delay the awaiting for appoint, our appointment of the contractor. When the contractor comes again, we do the access, the contractor will be awaiting to go and buy the materials and stuff. So it's a problem. It makes a design. That is why my young friend was saying even the issue of emergency, when we're requesting to say, can this be treated as an emergency? Because if we are having a pipe blast of a sewer in the institution, during the process, that now it making the infection. They, the, the, the main objective of the, the, the hospitals is to try and assist um, our community in ensuring that their health care are, are taken together. But now when the community are coming into the area that they have the infection, they will end up having the nosocomial infection and we are getting litigation. So we're defeating the purpose of the institution. So, um, Chair, what it even make things um, so, so, so painful you indicated the issue of SMMEs. We know that we are having our local uh, SMEs, uh, SMMEs in our, maybe in Sowe to largely, but those contractors that are in and out in our institution, they are not people who are residing in Sowe to. That is simply because when DID may be advertising uh, for, the, for, for, for those um, contractors to submit for them to make the, 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 the database. People from Limpopo, from KZN, they will be using the residential address of Soweto. And then when now DID appointing those contractors, they will be using people from Pretoria. That is why you will see when, when you want to do a follow-up, you will find someone say, no, I'm in KZN, I'm in Limpopo. And then you say, but I, was thought that, I thought that we're using a local database. So that thing is mainly because DID is the one who is doing those things. We are, we are, we are not included when those uh, structures are made and stuff. And then my proposal is very simple, uh, Chairperson. Since, well, the answer was said, no, we don't have the capacity. From all these years, we have been working together with DID. It's clear that the experience has taught us a lot as an institution. It's high time we let the FMU, the facility management, undertake all this maintenance within the institution. That will eliminate the, 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 the delay that we are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are having currently, one. Two, that will give us now a power to take a full accountability when things are not done in instead of taking the, the long route of going to the chief artisan, we'll just go straight to where the problem or go straight where the, this discipline are and ensure that those things are getting done according to what is expected. Number three, we will be able to identify where are the gaps. If there is, uh, uh, we've done our assessment, we'll see to say, okay, according to our needs, we need three plumbers, we need three carpentries, we need four electricians. And then we'll, we'll manage them accordingly. When there is a shortage, we'll be able to fill up those posts. But you go to the institution, things are not balancing chairperson. Solely because it, the managers of DID and they are not in the institution, 
they are staying in Tulisa Park. They are, they, they are managing remotely. And then it's difficult for us to maintain. We end up now using even the cleaners, the property caterers, to attend to those defects because we cannot um, uh, be listened to by the, 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 the people who are supposed to assist us in regard to that. So if maybe, Chairperson, we can just uh, take all this responsibility of maintenance and put them into the institution with the budget and stuff, we will use the, the internal supply chain like any other things that we are using. And then in terms of managing, we will hire. If the institution can, we have our own chief artisan, our own engineering, our own internal plumbing electrician, and we have our FMU team within the institution, that will assist a lot because we will now be able to take a full responsibility and attend to the matter as, early as, as, as possible. And then even that will also assist the issue of the SMMEs that are not even considered to be given those contractors. Because we are staying in Soweto, we know those people will be the one. If somebody comes and writes an address that is uh, he's staying in Soweto, whereas he's staying in Pretoria, we'll be able to notice as quick as possible and verify that. Thanks. That is my submission, Chairperson. Number six. Uh, thanks, Mr. Shepherdson. See, you are being a dela wong. Mundo, ujabla no gam konsa no. See, buya etsakane. See, kolo buzong bari. See, very the pollution at I mentioned wong. And the very same problems le ang tama bafita bakalang ao inginga si zinkanda risha yunati. Niya kabang o dindo nes nengi ni covered, but bifunu wasu di i pollution ngonjo bayo nenga balang wong isalakanja. Niya ba. Number six was somewhere at the back. Are we covered there? Okay, number seven. Yeah, in front. Uh, uh, good morning, uh, colleagues. Good morning, uh, Chair. Thank you very much. So, my name is Shaga Kule. Uh, I'm representing Gutara Hospital. Uh, colleagues, for me to, to be repetitive, I, th I think it would be unfair. So what has been uh, reflected by my colleagues here does answer everything. So the, fr the frustration is equally there. <clears throat> so my uh, colleagues is that uh, as we reflect on these issues, we need to be mindful that UTIT is part of our government, number one. Number two is that I think there was a service level agreement entered into between Department of Health and uh, Department of Infrastructure Development. So uh, when I, I went to that service level agreement, it has been, everything that is there has been taken from the project management as a, as a science. So meaning that the science is there, how to attend to these issues, but then unfortunately, the single point of responsibility where one needs to account in terms of what is it that they are doing as the, our counterpart is, is very, very, very lacking. Because really it will be unfair that we, we, answer, we try to answer the question of saying, do we have a capacity to attend to the minor maintenance issues? Whilst at every day probably we might be lacking some technical know-how to undertake that. So I think it, this should have been a lesson because UTIT is very nice, therefore then there was supposed to be a transfer, um, a transfer of knowledge. So that when we talk about this kind of issues, at least, yes, we are, we are, we are capacitated because of us, we have learned from the past. Because your, your, your basic principle of project management talks to inception of a project and they, they, they finish up. So the only issues that I've uh, realized with the Department of Infrastructure is that they are not sensitive to equality and manage, managing of time because the project becomes finalized or hand of, uh, handed over to the end user, that is us, but then unfortunately you'll only see the inspector and, the, and when he comes to give him his, his payment certificate, which obviously defeats your, your project management principle as a science. So all what I'm saying is that for us to come simply, simply to give he, he, the, the audience there to say yes we can or we, we cannot, I think we need to go back and try and analyze 
what was the source of the problem? Why did we enter into this service level agreement? Because there was a reason. We are managing safety of our patient and the risk is there. So therefore then we cannot just come simply and say, yes, we can, we can do or we cannot able to do. One talked about the compliance, even if we can opt to get your SMEs coming on board. But then are we ready enough to adhere and to be um, accountable to your supply chain management principles or not? So all what I'm, I'm saying is that I think we need to give this a chance. We need to employ UTI to, to come on board and their principle to be accountable to, to their, to, to their um, um, officials. Because for me, it's just a, a question of lacking of your discipline in as far as pro, uh, managing the project. And therefore, then if maybe somebody from GTID can come on board and be part of these meetings, then at least we can have some, some direction into this exercise. Thank you. Number eight. Thank you, Chair. Um, my name is Sunny Boy Masingi uh, from Tembisa Hospital. I thought that we will have um, a facility, facility manager uh, responding here on the matters. Chair, I'm, I'm going to be a little bit broad because uh, I was listening to facility managers and I'm not one. Your invitation was actually talking to facility managers and then forgetting one particular uh, huge stakeholder uh, being the board. And I'll check that uh, invitation. It was not mentioning them, but uh, we're dragged uh, to come. Uh, I'm here. Chair, um, this matter is a matter, I don't know whether the question is correct, that uh, do we have capacity? That is the question, do we have capacity uh, for the purposes of service delivery? Let's turn it around and say we do have facility. I mean, I'm, uh, capacity, I'm sorry. We do have capacity, and then if we have capacity, the return question is, do we have budget? Do we have budget to see to it that uh, those projects are seen through? I think, Chair, we should actually take these things in a very holistic approach we know for the fact that uh, a budget is a serious problem in this, in this department. And being a serious uh, challenge, all these colleagues that have actually narrated their frustrations, they talk to that. Yes, I understand warm bodies. It is a matter that we need to look into. But Chair, when we receive, I don't know if there is any chairpersons of the board here, because we have stretched ourselves. I know there's another meeting of the anti-corruption by the Premier and Brian Stein as we speak, and it has caused a number of confusion in terms of the attendance. But Chair, um, we are having serious problems with maintenance in hospitals. Serious challenge. And when we receive reports in boards, the only thing that the executive will tell you is that we are unable to see to it that we give proper maintenance to hospitals because our budget are actually getting into accruals every year. I'm not sure which hospital starts its financial year on the clean slate here. 
If there's one, we need to give them a trophy. Because we always start on accruals because of the problems that are there. I've listened to other colleagues here speaking that every year, and the research results has also actually spoken to that. Every year, the budget goes down, but the responsibilities goes high. So it's like rain. When you go up, the rain comes down. It's a very serious problem because you cannot expand the responsibilities and then the budget goes down. What, what advice is that? That is the biggest question. And on the issues of capacity in terms of warm bodies, I would like to, 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 to differ a bit when we say maybe the question, the way it's phrased, we don't have capacity. These hospitals do have capacity, but they don't have warm bodies as we speak now. They've worked with these projects for years, but if they're not given the responsibilities of taking care of these hospitals and making sure that in terms of warm bodies we have people then we'll then answer and say we don't have capacity. But if we take the responsibilities and give to these hospitals, I can tell you now, Chair, we will be able to run this project very efficiently than the DID. And the problem that we have is that it's so difficult, and I want to emphasize, I know somebody spoke about it, it's so difficult to make somebody to account while you are not actually the accounting officer to that person. Very difficult. Even if you can come 12 o'clock, you cannot ask a question because you'll tell, I started at my department or something, and I can come whatever time that I come. And how do we then actually want to become policemen on projects that some of them were not even part of when they are initiated? I can, sh I can just give you one example in Tembisa Hospital, uh, Chair. We had to actually refuse to sign a project that was actually hedged somewhere and being brought to the hospital for implementation. And we refused to sign because it was not talking to our needs. There's a saying, Chair, that says nothing about us without us. Because you cannot plan for me when you don't know what are my needs. If you want to plan for me, Make me part of that. Then you'll be able to actually put a proper plan. I know, Chair, that this session today, and then I think we should help you, and this, all of us in this hall who are here, we should help you. I know this session is actually trying to find a way because you don't want to go and say, please, give, take these responsibilities back to the Department of Health. Because there will be questioned to say, what advice is that? Now, I want to help you and aid you and say, we are saying here, yeah, those responsibilities must come back here and it's budget so that we are able to do our work. That budget must come here. And also, the issue of capacity, I will hunch on it because it's something that I had one of my colleagues wanting to say we don't have capacity. I will uh, disagree. I really disagree that we don't have capacity. And the issue of people that we're saying uh, 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 they cannot actually uh, do issues like, you know, changing the, bu the bulb, having to call somebody from Petersburg. It's a, it's a shame. 
and disgrace. When some people in the township are hungry and unable to actually get that particular job, and in reality we'll be also failing on our side, when we have just recently signed a Gauteng, uh, 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 um, a small business, a small economic development act that has to help us to be able to give jobs to our own people within the townships. The problem are also on procurement, uh, Chair, because the way these things are done, there are too many questions that will never have a, an answer at all. People employ their own friends and leave our own brothers in the township next to the hospitals. That's where the problem is. So we should be able and actually give you uh, the, 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 the provision that you are looking for uh, to be able to also help us as institutions to say that responsibility must come. Let me give you an example with the Department of Education. They go and build a school and they do it uh, via DID. But when they have to deal with issues of maintenance and all that, they have a system that actually calls for small business uh, uh, quotations that are able to go and fix the gutters and fix windows and all that. What stops us from actually being able to do that? So it's, some, it's something that, Chair, we should be able to look into it. And I was pleased with one uh, speaker here who was saying, we are one government, different departments, but those departments spoke at some stage and agreed there was a reason for that. Now the question, where is the reason for accountability not being able to talk again, like we did agree to actually have a service level agreement? Why aren't we actually speaking and saying, we have these problems? How do we improve on what we have as of now? We work in silos, that's our problem. Each department wants to shine at the expense of the other. And then who actually suffers is the ground, and the ground is us as hospitals, and the ultimate sufferer is the patient. So we should be able, Chair, to actually change this approach and then be able uh, uh, to, to, to streamline these things and be able uh, and say to you, I think we are unison in one voice. Bring back the responsibility and its budget to the uh, to hospitals will be able to implement. Thank you. Number nine. Is it on? Oh, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, my name is Amelia Morani from uh, Vesco Peace Hospital. Uh, I'm also going to be short uh, since most of our colleagues have uh, elaborated further. So it clearly looks like we are sharing the same challenges as hospitals. So there won't be need to do some repetitions. So uh, personally, or as Vescopis, uh, I believe we do uh, have the capacity uh, to run the projects because some of us, we do have technical backgrounds so in order to be able to do uh, or run those projects, you need to be fully equipped yourself or skilled. Uh, some of us know how to draw specifications. We know how to monitor those projects. So with that reason, I do believe that we do have the skills uh, to run those projects. Since uh, the project managers are inspectors from DID, obviously as the end user, as FMU, we we can't obviously process or proceed with the, with the payments without doing our own verifications. So the only challenge that, will, that may arise uh, is from our own department. If the resources can be provided, resources like engineers, 
Uh, I heard one of the speakers mentioning about the boiler. That is one of the specialized traits. So if the Department of, of our uh, uh, Health can provide the resources that is needed, uh, I believe that can be uh, achieved. And also in terms of budget, uh, if the, the department can also consider or look at the fact of um, uh, allocating budgets, uh, they should also consider the criteria that is used to allocate the budget. For example, I've already talked about uh, Vescopis Hospital. We are a hospital of more than 130 or more than 130 years old. So uh, considering our, our needs, uh, I, I believe that uh, we, we can uh, run the, the, the project. Uh, um, yeah, I think that's all I can say for now. Uh, I'm in full support of the previous speaker who said we do have the capacity to, to run the projects. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you. Uh, number 10. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, my name is Albert Dekhala from Kalafan Hospital. Uh, on the question of whether we have the capacity, the reality is no, we don't have the capacity. But I believe that is self-made due to the model that we're currently using. We are limiting ourselves in terms of capacity. But now I believe the question is, is it feasible, is it viable to capacitate the hospital with uh, the skills and the resources? And the answer will be yes. Uh, there is an appetite, there is an interest from the institution uh, to capacitate uh, our FMU for execution and monitoring our maintenance. So I'll give an example with regard to security. Uh, you'll send a request to FMU to assist with uh, infrastructure to ensure that this hospital is secured. They'll have to liaise with a DID. OHS as well, uh, you will escalate to section 16 to the CEO for implementation of certain project. He'll still need to liaise with the DID. So in terms of uh, interest or the appetite, yes, there is. We need to really look out uh, for, for the model um, in support of changing the allocation 90-10. If it's not possible to give 100% of the budget to the institution or to health, we need to really look at uh, the 10% is too little. We can do more as the institution as well as with regard to the supporting of uh, local business, I think we do have capacity within our community to supplement the, the skills or the capacity for the hospital. And as such, it is difficult for the hospital to account to the community while we're not sure about the process that DID followed in sourcing or contracting the service provider that are assisting within the hospital. So yes, I, I believe it's about time this process re-looked. Re uh, if not 100%, you need to consider increasing the allocation for the hospital. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. That was the 10 hands that we have noted. Uh, I will allow uh, members in front to also take a bite and then uh, we'll get to summarize what will be, what will have been the suggestions from the floor. Uh, honorable members, uh, member duplices. Thank you, Chair. I'm just blown away again by the talent we have in our country um, and the incredible inputs that we've gotten. Um, we will consider, we will um, read the reports, and we will go forward from there. Thank you very much to all the stakeholders. Member Letia. Thank you very much, uh, Chair, and good morning once more. Uh, I think for, for us as committee members, it's always uh, encouraging when we receive inputs from our stakeholders. Uh, the inputs that will help us to 
advise the department properly so that they model the effective um, interventions to challenges faced by various stakeholders in the, in the department. But Chair, from listening to the inputs uh, from various speakers who have shared their views with us today, I want to make the following uh, analysis which is subject to correction. Uh, I'm saying this is what I'm taking home from your inputs. The first thing is to acknowledge that the model or the decision that uh, DID must do in, uh, maintenance in hospitals was informed by material conditions at that particular time. And a decision was taken, informed by what were the challenges. And us having convened here today, and uh, us as a committee having visited various institutions, we are saying that model is no longer helping or is no longer effective, whatever that would have informed that. With that acknowledgement, the question that was put before everybody was to say, do we have the capacity to do minor infrastructure maintenance in our institutions? They say yes and no answer. But in my view, it's a conditional yes and a conditional no. All what you are saying, if I'm listening to you, you are saying, yes, we can do the infrastructure maintenance on condition. We are given sufficient budget that is inclusive of human resources. If you are allocated budget that will ensure that you are able to appoint skilled people to do the maintenance, yes, you will be able to carry out the minor maintenance as effective and on time compared to the service that you are receiving from DID. I'm saying my inputs are subject to your own confirmation, but this is what I'm getting from you. Maybe my question for me would be, we, we still need to have some cost analysis. I've heard some, some of the colleagues here when they were making inputs, I think they still want to go and appoint contractors somewhere to do the very same job, but managed by them. I did not get it very clear from all of you saying yes, we'll appoint our own, there's still an option of insourcing and outsourcing, which I'll still throw back to the engagement chair to say, as we go home, maybe we should be clear on what needs to be done. Because uh, you're speaking to civil engineers, you're speaking to whoever, and remember the core function of the Department of Health is to deliver health services. So in trying to balance that, because this part of maintenance is more of a support role to the department, so that finally you are not overwhelmed by what is not your core function. How do we create a balance? And that's what I'm hearing from you. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, thank you. Uh, is there anyone who probably would have been left who thought what has been raised uh, leaves out what also needs to be part of the suggestions that we must take. I see, uh, ooh, but you have spoken already, yeah. Let's give those that have not spoken, but uh, please try to be short as much as possible, not exceed two minutes. I'll take uh, in red one, two, three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Two minutes, please. Number one. Uh, good morning, Chair. My name is Siponchanga, Facility Maintenance, Caltonville Hospital. Uh, I'd also like to throw my spanner in the works, but uh, with emphasis to the notion that says, yes, we do have capacity, 
to, to execute minor. And take note, we're saying minor, not major. Why am I saying this? A, a quick and a brief background is this. You find in other institutions, in the FMU office on its own, the same head or the same leader of the office does not know how to change the tap himself, does not know how to solder himself. So it's difficult when you go to see an attended works order to say it is attended properly or not. So what we need to do then from there is capacitate us as well. You know, we find I've been in the office for five, six years or for two years, but I have never gone to, a, a, to any training, be it electrical, be it mechanical. So train us as well in the same process so that when I'm ought to manage these people that are doing these things, I know when they've done them properly, right? And then secondly, we have gone to an extent of training ourselves as well when we see, you know, when we engage with DID, this is what they do, specifications, uh, project manage management. We are some, some of us qualified in those aspects. But however, we need to look at it, you know, in, in, in a dual view to say, much as you are going to capacitate me, you know, I'll take one of the inputs from the colleagues that says, um, uh, capacitate the office as well with regards to qualified maybe three or four trades, electrician, um, plumber, and, and so forth, that they be part of the FMU office. So that when you say you need to change a bulb, you don't need to follow the whole process of going to DID and they come six of them to change one bulb. You know, if I, I know how to attend something myself, before it goes to DID, I do it myself. Changing something from the wall, you need to drill and do that. I do that myself, then it, it shortens the turnaround time. And then secondly, before I, I give away the mic, we need to, before saying we have the capacity, look at the process from end to finish to say, when you give me this function and say, Mr. Nchanga, execute these functions, what am I going to do from start to finish? When my supply chain is going to be involved here in the, in the institution, do they have capacity? Do they know the process? Because you find you hand a document to supply chain and they do not invite, uh, they do not have site meetings. When they have site meetings, they do not know what to do as well. All they, need, they, they know is how to call suppliers, how to, but how do you then call which suppliers? So you need to capacitate FMU as well as, uh, in, in terms of what should be done properly as far as supply chain is concerned. Thank you. Okay, I said uh, let's take two minutes each. Let's not lament or continue to speak what others have already spoken. And I'm saying we're opening it because we thought there could be something that might have been left out. But if you want to repeat, uh, unfortunately, it's not our intention to open it. Please bring new ideas. Okay, good morning, Chair. Um, I'm just going to be short, like you're saying, we need not to repeat ourselves on what other colleagues have just said. Uh, based on the question, if uh, the Department of Health has a capacity, I have two answers, which is no and yes. No, it means the department doesn't have a capacity on the side of the human resource which my proposal is that we'd request that the organizational structure be reviewed and the technical expertise be appointed to work hand in hand with the facility managers. The second one to my answer to no is the issue of funds allocated to the department, which is inadequate. My answer to yes is that, yes, as the department, we do have a capacity, how? By following the process of uh, supply chain, we can be able to outsource from the SMMEs to go through the minor uh, infrastructural maintenance, day-to-day -day maintenance. So the issue of reviewal of the structure, the funds, and everything is a long-term process. So in an interim, I would request that you recommend that we do our minor infrastructural by sourcing 
by outsourcing from our local suppliers. That's my take. Thank you. Number three. Thank you. Um, good morning. Um, my name is Leon van der Westeisen. I'm from Chris Honey Baraguanath Academic Hospital. Um, we are very much in favor for, um, you know, this uh, uh, managing infrastructure projects within the hospital. Um, however, we have uh, in FMU about 20 staff members and we have 406 buildings. Um, as we know, we are the biggest in the whole uh, southern hemisphere versus 100, almost 150 uh, staff members at DID. So you can Im immediately see this, the, the discrepancy in terms of uh, technical staff. I don't want to repeat what other people mentioned, but I want to be specific. Um, the current uh, funding model of 90-10, it's not conducive for majority of the hospitals. At Barra, we would even uh, suggest that we look at 70-30 uh, uh, split of the maintenance budget, unlike the current 90-10. And um, across the board, in all FMU uh, units, um, we have issues of uh, skills, equipment challenges, material challenges, tools of, of trade, etc. And um, I think what would have been also uh, maybe ideal for the hospitals is to have maybe a much more in detail uh, feasibility study in terms of uh, this project that you are engaging in. And um, I think one or two other speakers just mentioned the issue of the supply chains. Of course, at Barra, if, if we procure services within ourselves, um, of course, the supply chain management units will also have to be beefed up uh, because of paperwork and, and the acquisition processes. Thank you. Okay, can we get to the next one? But uh, it will seem to me that we are repeating the same thing that has been said. Uh, I thought uh, we will bring new things that w were left out, but the uh, colleagues keep on saying things that have been said. Next one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, greetings to the house. Um, my name is Sinila Kleftendamana from Katlao. Uh, I think the biggest challenge is that we're looking at the funds and we're looking at how to do, but we're not looking at the issue of who should do. Um, the biggest challenge that we are facing at this current stage is that the youth is unskilled firstly, and there's no community entry process in terms of the hospitals and the, its own community. I, I believe if the communities will be the ones that are taking charge of their own respective facilities. It's going to be much more easier for them to be able to be uh, constructive in service delivery. So I think that the most important thing that um, the institution needs to look at is to go back and make sure that they work hand in hand with higher education uh, institutions and also ha work hand in hand with each and every uh, high schools so that they can be able to capacitate the youth that are coming out from high schools going to institutions so that they can be able to uh, make sure that they are engineers, artisans and what so on. The most challenge that we are facing at right now is that you are not focusing on skills and development for the youth and making sure that the low Local economic development is within the local development, not specifically looking at the provincial and the national one, but focusing on the local development. You can't be speaking of local development, but we are focusing on the provincial side. But if now we're going to say we're going back to the communities and we're going to have satellite um, offices for DITs so that they can be accountable within the very same space that they are working in. Because we can't have a challenge whereby now we are going to be talking to a person in KZN, where else we're having a challenge in Katlehong. So the most important thing that we need to do is revisit the schools and make sure that we capacitate our own high school students and also make sure that we integrate them into FETs and, 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 and higher institutions. That's the most important thing that I am looking at as uh, uh, the, the current youth, that we are sitting at a position whereby we are not being given an opportunity to be skilled enough to make sure that we take each and every initiative in our own hands. Greetings to everyone. My name is Ndombi from Guatemala as a ward committee for health and social development. 
my concern um, on health, as health, um, health department is, can you please consider our learners when they are with you at the hospital level? We always find people that will tell you that they are facing that um, you don't take them, you always give them the contract. Can you please take them permanent? We know you don't have a budget. Can you please consider them? But secondly, can you please also take our, take our SMEs very serious? Because we'll find ourselves going to the, to the department, but you don't take us. You're taking old people or you're only taking men. Can you please empower young women? Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson, and good morning, colleagues. Um, what I'm going to do is just to do additions to the previous speakers, our colleagues. I think, yes, Chairperson, we've got the... My name is Masilu Malaji from Audio Hospital. Yes, we have capacity, Chairperson. The only pr challenge that we will have is in terms of electromagnetic uh, equipment, such as boiler and generators. I think those ones if we could be assisted in getting the contractors, those who are specialized in, on those fields. But in terms of building and overall maintenance, I think the only thing that we need to do also is to capacitate the appointment of uh, technical people like your handyman. Then I think we will be maximizing our chance in terms of capacitating FMU, executing his own uh, responsibilities. Uh, but the only challenge here for me is mechano, electric, electro, boiler and generators. We need assistance in that regard. Thank you, Chairperson. Number nine. Uh, thank you, Chair. My name is Andres Mutlova from David Van Mayfield Extension 6. I will try to be in brief in order to be on the same page. My challenge is here. Uh, we have two hospitals which is outside of our township, it's too far. Then it's at east side. Then we have two clinics which also is at the old location. Our township is uh, growing towards west side. Then we're supposed to walk 10 kilometers to reach clinic. Here is the uh, challenges. Then after 12, there is a cut of queues. Two, there is a loss of files, cards. I pass there. Then the last is a question. Since uh, 2019 uh, financial year, there is a clinic which was approved till to date. Then the Earth number was already allocated. So far, we don't know. We don't know actually what's happened about that clinic. Can we make follow-up chair for that uh, issue? Because it's in a challenge. I uh, thank you, chair. Number nine. I think it's here somewhere. Yes. Thank you very much, Jay. Um, to avoid creating an echo chamber, I think there are two things that we need to look at. We must clearly distinguish between the capacity to manage the process and the capacity of actually doing the work. There is a huge difference between that. And that's something that we will have to address at the institution level, with each and every institution, because the, the needs differ from institution to institution. And then the second thing is, I think the best starting point 
is to bring the budget back to the institution. Let the CEO, the management team, the FMU decide on what needs to be done in a his or her institution and instruct whoever they might be, DID or our own people, instruct that it must be done. Thanks. Thank you very much. We appreciate your effort and contributions to the FIS topic. Uh, we, we, we have taken note of all the issues raised, starting with or amongst, it's the issue of the 9-10 funding, uh, funding model that uh, has its challenges. Uh, but above all is that uh, the issue of inf infrastructure in our facilities remains a challenge. And the DID is unable to maintain or deal with the issue of maintenance in our facilities. Uh, there's, however, a lot of or the various suggestions that you have made, and we've taken note of, uh, amongst also includes the organizational structure that needs to be relooked, uh, but also the service level agreement uh, the training and capacitation uh, of, of uh, those that will be responsible. Uh, there's quite a lot of issues that you've mentioned and we've taken note of. Uh, and I think it will compile a report that will be shared with the department and find a way, way forward out of it. But the important as well is that uh, whether yes or no uh, in terms of whether we are ready or not ready, but uh, uh, most importantly is that it is out of your submission that if uh, the, the, this maintenance is done from uh, our health facilities, it could create a lot of efficiencies in the system. So it could go a long way into resolving most of these inherent challenges that exist within our health facilities. Uh, I think we've taken note of all, all those issues that uh, were raised to we'll compile a report and, 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 and see how we take, we, we take the process forward. We must appreciate your time, effort uh, 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 in this cold weather. Uh, the weather today is very unfriendly. Uh, but you graced this uh, session with your presence. Uh, it's much appreciated. And uh, I think if there's nothing further, is there anything? Uh, was, yes. Okay, can you make that announcement then, Lucas? Thank you, Chair. I just wanted to state that if the members, I'm a member of Umpagat, if they can remain inside the hall for lunch and the management from the hospital can proceed to the hall next door. Thanks. Okay. Uh, considering that we are about to adjourn, they are saying life, lunch is served. Uh, others will remain here. Others will just go next door in the where we had our breakfast. Uh, and have our lunch. Thanks. Thank you very much. The session is adjourned.